We are here because we are dedicated to helping the entire CrossFit community. Determined to elevate coaches, box owners, athletes, and everything in between, we believe that this mission will begin right here, right now. While this time and this goal begins with you, our hope is that you take this fire ignited within you and weave it into your own life with the same unrelenting passion to give those you have the privilege of coming in contact with the best hour of their day. Welcome back. It's 2021, Fern. I think everyone was looking forward to 2021 and it's the same thing. Let's let's seriously hope that it is not the same thing because then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just mean, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, 2021, it's going to be different. Yes, I believe in 2021, it will be different, but it's not going to be January 1st or most likely even February 1st. But sometime in the spring, hopefully we'll see it. an end to this whole well, insanity of 2020. I think obviously there are extenuating circumstances for everybody and I feel very fortunate to, to some be, degree to be my for, partner. Yes. To be, is that what you were going to say? To have somebody that it's easy to make me look good that you're so bad. Right. It's just, you know, I, it's like, it's like twins. Like when Arnold Schwartz, Arnold Schwarzenegger was already a stud, but when you put him next to Danny DeVito, he looks even better. So are, are that's, you saying, that's our per- Am I the Danny DeVito to you? You're definitely not the Arnold Schwarzenegger. So <laughs> are either of us, are either of us the Arnold, the Arnold Schwarzenegger in this equation? Yeah, I'm Arnold for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, let me ask you this, you know, New Year's came and went already. What do you guys do at the box for New Year's Day? Do you do a special workout every year? No, we're actually going to be closed. You're closing, or you? I mean, we're recording this on New Year's Eve, but you close tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to be closed tomorrow. Do you think more box owners need to take advantage of those holidays? I feel like, as entrepreneurs, small business owners, like we need to be open. Where, it, in my experience, your members are respectful and okay with the fact that it's a holiday. I think. There's this weird. I've got this crazy buzzing in my ears right now. Okay, it's gone. I don't All right, hear it. I think I don't hear it. no. Well, that's good. The um, I think there's this strange. I don't think I know because I used to feel this way. Most gym owners spend their entire careers in startup mode, meaning everything is a hustle and a grind forever. And they never get out of that. Um, so for, you know, we, when years ago, and we were having this discussion in the, uh, in the, um, it's back in the private Facebook group the other day about open gym on Sundays. And I think, I think Kristen, I think Kristen Andrea, you know, recently like talked me out of it. open gym on Sunday. We, we got rid of it like two years ago. You're talking Kristen Andrea. Uh, at at cross. Yeah. Trident. Yeah. Kristen Andrea Smith. Um, at Trident, the, they got rid of it and then I got rid of it. And I think um, I was so worried that we were, that people, there was going to be this huge fallout and that we had to be open all the time to have the appeal and for people to, you know, want to be here. And it, it's just not true. And the reality is, I mean, being open for 365 days a year is absolutely unreasonable for some, for a, for a, a business of this nature, for a small owner operator brick and mortar business is not reasonable and there's ways around that so when we closed it was great and i wanted i wanted to give myself a break i wanted to give the staff a break and it's just one of these things where you have to take care of yourself and if you're closed on sunday number one it's not weird everybody's closed on sunday chick plays closed on sunday (laughs) and and i think some members it's almost like a sense of relief like, uh, like, well, if you're open, they feel the need to come in. Where if you're like, we're close, you need to take a rest day anyway. And the beauty of CrossFit is you can do this anywhere. So, okay, you want to go do 150 burpees? Go do that. Like, if you need to work out. Yeah, do, you know, like, and I, I agree with you 1,000%. And this is where you can use, you know, some of the gems that Coach Glassman gave us, which is 
regularly learn and play new sports. I'm like, go do something else. Go for a hike. Go for a run on the beach. Go swimming. Go go play hopscotch. I don't care. Just do something somewhere else. Go rock climb in Logan's room. Go rock climb in my in my in my kids' room. So we have a rock climbing. <laughs> well, wall. and I think that's a. I mean, that's a whole other topic where people get into CrossFit to typically. I want to feel better. I want to participate in other things, and then CrossFit just becomes the only thing they do, and it's like you're not actually doing CrossFit anymore. Like people forget CrossFit should make you better at life. And for so many people, it's CrossFit makes me better at CrossFit. Yeah. And that's kind of a, a meta discussion and, and more of a leadership discussion about what is the culture you've created. And probably more so over the past three or four years, I've become a little bit more aware of that, of like, yes, we have the, you don't have to work out to hang out sign in there. And I do want people to hang out in there forever and never, ever leave. But I also don't want this to be the only thing in their life, right? I want them to have significant value attached to it, but I also want them to be able to detach, right? It's a want, right? So this is the difference between a need and a want. If I create a bunch of gym junkies who feel they always need to work out, I'm not sure how healthy that is. I don't, I'm not sure I'm actually helping anybody. But if I've created an environment where they want to be there, but they're totally okay with separating it from, from it, that I think is the ultimate goal in order to get to. Now, I don't know if we're there. That's the, that's the marker that we're trying to strive towards. And, to, and this sounds a little weird, but sometimes closing your gym is how you do that. Yeah, like I said, I think it's your members may not realize they need it, but it's sometimes it's like, hey, this might not be what you want, but it's what you need. And expect, you know, even if it's spend time with your family, spend time with your kids, take your dog for a walk, just get out of the box. You know, Pat Sherwood used to be a big proponent of, you know, get outside of the box. Right. I mean, like, forget the members, and this sounds a little weird, but the gym owner needs that. Yeah, like well, you need to, you need to know. I mean, there, I take great freedom, and and I get a lot just knowing that no matter what happens, I don't have to be here on Sunday, right? It's not like I've got a guy who does it on Sunday, and then suddenly he's sick for three weeks, and now I have to be there every Sunday for three weeks. And I'm a big proponent of, I don't, there's certain things that I don't do that I'm not going to make other people do that I'm not willing to do. Now, it's not to say that I wouldn't be here on Sundays if we were open, because I did that for years and years and years on end. But the second I was like, we don't need to be open on Sundays anymore. I wasn't like, we're going to put somebody else in there on Sunday anymore. Cause I was decided, I'm like, it's not needed. It's, there's really not that this, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not an actual demand right? This is the everybody wants open gym scenario, right? That whole thing where like everybody wants a thing, but that everybody is one person, you know, give them some other option, you know? Um, but I wasn't going to stick somebody else in there for something that I had fully come to the conclusion was no longer necessary. And I wasn't willing to do anymore. You know, and I think that is a fault and a mistake that box owners make. It's like, well, I've got a coach that can do it. Well, that coach is going to burn out one day too. And, you know, I made that mistake, I had my coaches, there was a, I think I've mentioned this before, but two or three consecutive years where we were open 365, Christmas. We, we were Easter, like that forever. Easter, yeah, even Hanukkah, even all eight days of Hanukkah, we stayed open. <laughs> and, you know, but, and I was like, well, I don't have to be there. And sometimes I would, and sometimes I wouldn't. You might, it's, it's an easy trap to fall into of like, I don't mind going in for an hour. You might not mind going in for an hour, but if you didn't go in today, you're even more energized. To, it's like a rest day. You right. might not need you know you need that rest day, but when you take it, damn, you feel really good on Monday. So yeah, I mean, I mean the general the general idea there is like, hey, if you want the members to have the best hour of their day, the people who provide that need to show up there ready to go. And if they always have this this work looming over their head. Cause I mean, make no mistake about it. At some, to some degree, this becomes groundhog's day and not every day is amazing as a, as a gym owner and a coach, you need to have those days to reset. Be like, I don't have to go to the gym today. I can like get my life together. I can get organized. And then tomorrow I'll be ready to go. And on Monday we're going to smash it. So you need to have that. And you just, you need to think about you're doing that for the members, but 
who's losing out because of that, right? It's generally you or the staff, right? So it needs to be a win-win for everybody. So take care of your staff. They will in turn take better care of the clients. And Sundays can be one of those days. On the flip side of that coin, if your open gym on Sunday is a crazy high demand thing and it works for you guys, great. I'm stoked for you. Yeah, th- this is not a an absolute. You 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 know whether you keep open gym on Sundays or close on New Year's Day, they're they're two very different things. But I think point is reevaluate. Make sure you're giving yourself, your staff, and your members much needed time away from the box. Yeah, I can't tell you how many weekends lately with how busy we've been with Affiliate University. Where I'm like, man, I just need to catch up in my personal life. And once yeah. I do that. The rest, you know, the hours I spend with our clients is even better because I'm not distracted. Well, I, I had this conversation. We were revamping the schedule the other day, yesterday in our in our weekly staff meeting. And, you know, I just I just straight up told Cass and Lindsay, I was like, hey, I need to give up some of these classes for the betterment of everybody. And they're like, cool, which ones? Right. So I offloaded, I don't know, I think 20 classes. In the month. And for the month. And I was just wow. like, I, I was like, what's be- What's good for me is that my life lives in the 15 to 20 range. And if it's good for me, then it's definitely good for all of you guys. Cause I can make sure that everybody's taken care of, right? Like I can float around and make sure all this other weird stuff that nobody wants to do gets done. And I love to coach. And if I'm doing too many things, then my classes suffer. I can't be present when I'm, uh, cause I'm always running to the next thing. And so then everybody's experience. You know, then I'm, I'm solving a problem as I'm walking away from somebody having a half conversation. So you have to find that balance, right? It's like, I still love to coach. I still love being on the floor and I don't ever want to give that up, but there is a sweet spot as you, as you start to ascend within the business, like where is my most valuable role? And hopefully you get to the point where like, it's not actually on the floor as much as I want that to be the case. It's not on the floor for 50 hours a month. It's just not. No, that's typically one of the first things we help our clients in affiliate university with is Hey, what can we do to get you off the floor? I mean, we all do this because we love coaching. And I think the pro and the con of coaching at the same time is you cannot be doing anything else in a good way. That means no matter what stressors I have in my life, once I step on that floor, my focus shifts, I'm not distracted. But the con to that is you cannot be doing anything else. So when you have a billion other things you need to do as a box owner, that you're the only one that can do those things. You can't do it when you're coaching. So Yeah, or, or you'll be stressed out and looking really, really ragged like Jay. What are you wow. gonna do about that, by the way? Why are you Well, let's be clear. I look pretty. <laughs> I've been using Doc Spartan. The show is brought to you by Doc Spartan, but if you use the code Best Hour, all caps, best hour, fifteen percent off at Doc Spartan. That's what I use for this beard. Can my beard is my best asset. It, we agree. <laughs> we agree. So if you if you want to have a really, do you shiny. have a gray in that beard? No, nope, I actually beard. have like two grays, but I pluck them. Good for you. What what else do they What else do they sell? So well, they besides do beard, I mean, they besides have men, beard ointment. When when I do put deodorant on, which is not often these days, I use my Doc Spartan deodorant. I've got very weird. Their coffee scrub is legit. If you like coffee, it is amazing it it smells if it gets in your mouth it tastes like coffee but it it invigorates your body uh there's it's it's really great so all their scrubs are good i was using um i think they have like a pumpkin one now they have all sorts of flavors but the coffee one is definitely my favorite then i use the sex panther beard butter i rub that all over and uh 80 percent of the time it works every time so no great stuff you know veteran owned box owner it is better no? yep. you know dale good dude so check him out best hour gets you 15 percent off if you want to look as sexy as i do as at least as sexy as i feel that's that's not a good pitch by the way yeah, yeah sexy as i feel like, i feel really right sexy. okay yeah if you want to feel as sexy as jay feels go ahead and go ahead and get yourself some doc spartan stuff the uh, is this is how i know i'm getting old right so i just turned 40 but when i was looking through that the thing that popped out to me immediately I was like oh ball spray Right. Like and now I'm just like, you remember like when you were young and you're like, I don't know why these old dudes use talcum powder and they're always dumping it in their pants. <laughs> I have the ball spray. I have the ball spray also. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was just I, like, oh, ball spray. I'm like, uh, maybe I'm at that point in my life when like talcum powder is something I'm going to be dumping all over my body for no particular reason whatsoever. 
you, you, you know, I agree with you. You can't go wrong with talcum powder. But my my stepfather used to like, put it in his shoes when I was growing up, and there'd be like a dust trail of it following him. <laughs> and now, now you understand. I'm like, I sweat. But there's nothing on their site that I don't recommend. Over the years, I've used it all. But had a conversation with Dale yesterday. He wanted to support the show. We want to support him. And one of the things we always try to do is work with people that – we enjoy people that we support their products. So docspartan.com, use the code best hour for 15% off. The other thing that we should talk about real quick is we do have our Patreon up and live. We do have Patreon. We do have so, Patreon, which I, for the longest time, thought is where just, you know, can, a lot of conspiracy theorists sell there things, are. There you know, are. like tinfoil hats and stuff like that. No, but well, what we do on Patreon is. We were getting so many questions to answer and we'll still address some on the show, but we were getting so many questions on a weekly basis to our Instagram and to our email once a month on Patreon, we answer the listeners questions. So if you are a coach, if you're a box owner or just a member that you want us to address some of the hard hitting questions, uh, once a month, we're going to be on there exclusively for Patreon. It's only $6. So even if you just like the show and you want to support us, I mean, we do all of these shows pretty much ad free. We don't put any, you know, a lot of podcasts these days have half the show is, is advertisements. So we, we try not to do well, that. Half of this show has been nonsense. So we need to clean that up. We do. We do do that. <laughs> but if you want to support best hour of their day, go over to Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash best hour of their day for $6. You can support us. And if you have questions, comments, we'll address them on our, our monthly episode over there. And we're going to grow that. So get in now because and as be, we, yeah, there will be a lot more of offerings there. We're going to offer a lot more content there as well. So, so let's talk about the topic at hand. As always, we put up a, a post that got some love, some hate, some people that are arguing over I thought, nonsense. I thought most of it was really good. Yeah. And again, it was the people that were arguing. I'm like, you're not arguing the same thing, but this was kind of my thought. I, I, you know, Katie made it, but I told her to make it. And then I wrote the copy and I just said, Hey, stop doing max height box jumps. Obviously I think we all understand there's, there's a purpose to them. Athletically, there's a tremendous transfer in your vertical ability and your potential power output strength, et cetera. In other words, the higher you can jump, the more you can probably snatch. I don't know if there's a direct correlation but there's a correlation there would you agree there's definitely a correlation i was just looking at uh you know um dr jenkins was just chimed in there on the thread too so i always appreciate the academics what he say um i'll read you his quote he's gonna be super pumped about this by the way oh I'm yeah him. gains by dr j everybody go follow him he's a smart dude uh it says maybe it should be max tolerable height jumps in keeping with relative intensity i can probably add an inch or two to my max uh, height box jump, but yeah, risk versus reward is definitely not there. I feel no need to PR that one ever again. And for some members, even attempting a max height jump at all doesn't make sense. But to say 36 to 40 or so, I'm relatively comfortable with that. And the challenge is good from both a training and, and practice standpoint. Could maybe program this as a max height box jump or, you know, just a really challenging jump. But don't fuck up your shins today, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, you know, when I say risk reward, and we'll talk about some other exercises and movements that I think I'm talking about, you know, the people that were commenting you know, one rep max can injure. You. Yes, of course. But we like to say functional movements are safe beyond your one rep max capability. This was more, you're going to smash your shins. So that's the genesis of that, of that comment, which is I made, this happened to us earlier this year. And for us, it's probably about, I mean, maybe on the nose once every 18 months, it happens. And this past time that it happened, I was like, no more. We're done. January. We're ordering all of the hard phone boxes from rogue. I'm making the, I'm making the investment in the gym, thousands of thousands of dollars. Um, and it's part of our, uh, it's this part of January, our, like yeah, now it's, gonna, it's, yeah, it's going to be one of our big, it's going to be the main item on our annual equipment buy list that we do. Um, every year or so but i just got it's just one of those things where like the longer i do this i'm it's just nobody should get that injury in my gym anymore i'm just like there's no reason for it and the last time it happened i was just fed up and i was like this is insane 
why like why is this happening we should not be allowing and i'm not saying we should not be allowing the box jump or max box jumps to happen that injury should not happen anymore which is why i was just like i'm done so if you're going to do it it does have absolute value and utility and what i put in that thread was it is almost entirely relegated to sport specific highly explosive athletes throwers sprinters football players basketball players uh, to some degree soccer players um and so that is where the in my mind that looks like you know a, a much more relevant tool to use for sports specific athletes somebody who's like you're gonna leave your gym and crossfit's not their main thing they use crossfit to make them a better athlete outside of the gym and if people want to play around with it that's fine but you, and you just like you see so many fail videos with plates stacked on plates stacked on plates i'm like that is just stupid you're well, just asking for an injury yeah you know whenever i see it happening it's like okay People are just stacking plates on there. People are barely making it. I'm like cringing. Something you were going to touch upon that you kind of brushed over is we've, and we've discussed it in the past and we discussed it in affiliate university is the equipment fee every year. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're a box and you're not doing that, you need to reach out to us because it's an easy way to add five to 10,000 in revenue to your box directly towards equipment. You need new echo bikes. You need, you want to make the change like Fern did from hard boxes to soft boxes, hit us up and we'll tell you how to do it. We'll tell you how to make it happen in a way that your members are not only happy, you know, not upset about it, but happy about it. They want right. to contribute. Right. So yeah, it, it's definitely a good that this will be our third second. I don't remember, but we've done it the past couple so, of years. So tell me about the transition. Are you just getting rid of all the old boxes? We'll sell them. You know, we'll sell those boxes for, I don't know, 40, 45 bucks a whack and, and make, you know, probably five, 600 bucks. And then how many of the soft boxes are you getting? 15, I think is the number we had on the list. We just went over yesterday. Of the three sided? Correct. Yeah. So beautiful. So you have that, you know, when I, when I first did it, so I, I told the story recently, but I had, I mean, maybe 10 times somebody smashed their shin. And a handful of those times, bad enough, they had to go to the doctor. But the very last time, one of my coaches, a good friend, Teresa, goes to jump, nails it, bone. Like, you see bone. She oh, yeah. Pa she passed out. You know, she's unconscious. We had to call. And I was just like, get rid of these. Like, that night, get rid of these boxes. And like you did. This is before I had an equipment fee. It was, you know, we spent probably six. At the time, they didn't have the three-sided ones. So I'm ordering you know, Rogue does like the eight, the 12, the 20. I was doing like yeah. 10 of those. It was so expensive, but I was like, yeah, it's, it's, you know, a, they, they have a cheaper one now. So I think there's the one that costs about two fifty, and there's another one that costs, I think about one seventy five. Yeah. The two fifty one is like the heavier one that I think is way more suitable from shit. There's a cheaper option. And I think it's called the echo or something like that. Exactly. So, I, I was looking to get one for the garage and I was talking to my, to the, to the coaches development group and they you know they said the more expensive one is weighted but it's the way to go right yeah i just don't want there to be any instability because if you buy some of the off-brand ones that when you jump on that thing it's sketch i mean it's so sketch like you're just gonna flip yourself over it's not even enough weight to like if you if you land a little forward that the box just won't flip out from under you but the so the real so there's two i think there's two and somebody brought it up in the thread and i think i commented and i was like you actually get the point of this there's two problems here. Number one is the injury. Like why risk the injury on something like that? Okay. That's the first and foremost. Like I shouldn't be doing anything that's going to risk an injury like that. We, we know that there is risk of injury with regard to training with intensity, but I want to mitigate it as much as possible. Safety, uh, mechanics, um, shit am I brain farting right now? Mechanics, consistency, intensity. So I want Learn, to mitigate. To I, I was, I was about to brain fart. They, there, I need to mitigate that. Now, the, sh the, the smashing your shin doesn't fall in that category, in my personal opinion, right? That's an accident, right, that, that needs to, like, try to go away. So if I could push everybody to try to do that, and th I'm, it, I'm throwing myself in this category as well, we need to try to move away from that because that's a pretty gory, horrific injury if you've ever seen one. Like, it's not pleasant, right? Blood everywhere. You're talking about, like, seeing actual bone. Um, it's, it's not cool. And so you just... 
that's not something you want to unfold. That's not something you want other people to see. The fear that that instills in other people that were like maybe on the cusp of jumping on a box who are now never going to jump on a box. I, that's just not a scenario that I, I that I want to be able to happen. Again, and that pain pain point. However, however seldom that pain point might arise, that's just not one that that, that I want in the gym at this point. And and, and that's the ahead. point of it. Like, you can get hurt doing any movement. We're not suggesting. I've always thought there are movements that are unnecessary, especially when you look at cool. Somebody jump, jumps forty eight inches. Like, there, there's are we gaining fitness? Like, really, what is that? Well. So this is the second problem with that, which is uh, we did a video that with this for dropping in when I talked about to some degree, and, and I do think this is fair criticism and this is nobody's fault, but we can point directly to the CrossFit in general, right? Like not cro like CrossFit didn't promote this number one. So I'm, I'm not in any means saying that, but we do see it a lot in CrossFit affiliates. So High volume box jumps do have utility, right? From a conditioning standpoint, they have a fantastic utility to, to get people moving and doing that. I will tell you from, from the standpoint and from the evaluation of plyometrics, one of the more bastardized movements in strength and conditioning, because most people are not actually jumping. It's a shitty jump followed by a really high knee tuck, which is not actually jumping. So if we're talking about creating explosive movement that has actual hip extension that transfers to virtually every other sporting aspect that we're it's not working right it's not the same thing so crossfitters are notorious for this for not jumping just pulling their feet up really fast and getting on top of the box so if we're talking about what is the utility of max height box jump I could do the same thing absent of all of the risk for injury by just doing max vertical height jump Right? Yeah, and you see this in NFL combines, you see it in NBA combines, all of these things, and you can do this a ton of different ways. If that's how you're going to test it, there's easy ways to test it. Test your vertical other ways. That's a far more relevant measurement or metric for your ability to have explosive capacity than max height box jump because you see a lot of people do max height box jump and I'm like, your vertical is decent. Your mobility and flexibility is high. Because you can pull your knees up really fast and you have good ankle dorsiflexion to get onto the, the plates or the box. And, you know, you could buy one of those. I, I forget what store I had. One was like bigger, faster, stronger, whatever the store right. where you jump. And you, yeah, it's and it, really. And it has like the, like, I think they're in like eighth inch markings. Like it's just a bunch of beads or sticks that stick out from pull. You could mount one of these on your pull-up bar. You could probably make one for 10 bucks. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about that. So where do we draw the line? with with box jumps in general i i i think we both are in agreement that ma max height is unnecessary where do box jumps fall in this and then what are some other movements that you think can and should be avoided well max height is, is it's the wrong tool to get what you're chasing right it, and, and again like it's probably just ignorance like nobody knew any better if you didn't grow up in the sports sports world you probably don't know that so it's it's a measurement that's not actually an accurate measurement Right. So it's, it's just like quasi correlate. So I, we know what everybody's trying to do, which is like we want you to get people to jump. Same thing when we teach the push jerk at the level one and the level two, get them to actually jump and you and you will just magically have hip extension, like absent of doing anything else. Like get them to jump up and touch something like that is how you teach hip, hip extension. The the utility of the box jump outside of somebody who has legitimate chances to compete in the sport. I think that bounding should largely go away. I'm not saying you should never do it. I'm just saying most people are not mechanically inclined enough. And I say biomechanically inclined enough to do that well, to make it worthwhile, right? They're so, they're so inefficient at it that they actually move slower by trying to bound rather than just stepping down and jumping back on the box. Do you, do you encourage your athletes not to rebound? Yes, we do. And do you now I learned, I learned the hard way, right? I mean, that's no secret. I like ruptured my Achilles and that was a freak accident. I mean, I have good ankle mobility. This is at regionals. Was 2013. When the, you were at, no, it's when actually, you were... it was actually, it was actually in the open. The, but, uh, but you know, no signs or symptoms, you know, I didn't have any inflammation or anything like that. It was just a freak accident. Like I was just probably just getting older, had 
you know, probably way too many miles in my body, but like jumping was on my thing. I was, I was, always, I was a jumper. I was a sprinter, all those things. So like, there was nothing in there that we would su- and I was competing at that time. So there's nothing in there su- to suggest that I shouldn't have done that. That's just the cost of competition. Right. However, the other people in my gym, no business doing that. It provides no value to them. I, you know, and, and one thing I always tell I, every time we're about to, to do box jumps, I'm like, no rebounding. If you really want to go for it, but I'm encouraging you not to explain the injuries, you know, whether it was you, we've talked about Julie Fouché, like it's just not worth the risk. So do your box jumps. I would, we would recommend you get soft boxes, but at a minimum to keep them safe, step downs, jump back up. Step downs. Yeah. What do you think about rope climbs? I've always thought rope climbs are silly. I don't think they're silly. Um, I think it's like most other things. I, I think people, it's, probably, it's one of the things that gets mailed in with regard to teaching, meaning so like the, a couple things we could throw in this bucket, kettlebell swings, rowing, the bike, double unders from a coaching standpoint, most people mail that in. they don't actually teach people the skill. If you understand rope climbs, rope climbs, yes, does require upper body strength, but it's very similar to the muscle up, which is I need a certain amount of upper body strength. Everything else past that is technique based. If you can sort your feet out, you can do a ton of rope climbs and not even have a strict pull up. I've got plenty of those people in my gym. Now, is there a downside for sure? Could you fall off the rope and, and sprain your ankle? I think that's maybe happened three times in 11 years, but there's answers for that too cut your rope so that it is flush to the floor and there's no extra, you know, there's a lot of solutions to that. Could you fall down? Sure. I think that could be almost 100% mitigated by how you approach what the goal is for a rope climb day. Meaning I would always, I always give this parameter, the height in which you are going to climb the rope is the height in which you can ascend and descend safely. Yeah. So it, if it's one pull and you come down, great. That's the height for the rope today. I don't care. It's there. It's not, it doesn't matter. Well, it's the same principle. I'm thinking of the box jumps, two injuries that I see on rope climbs that I've always felt are unnecessary are. Yeah. If your rope is too long, I've seen people break their ankle mm-hmm. and then B people just trashing their shins. And I've, I've had members at my former boxes get staph infection from that. I mean, and our gym was clean. It's not like, hey, we had a dirty gym, but there's just germs that sit in that rope that you can't do anything about. We don't let anybody climb the rope with uncovered skin. And, and you know, and that's really what I'm talking about. You know, I got to the point that whether it was a rope climb day, I would you know, bring in those sleeves from my shin or wear your high socks or pull your knee sleeve down. Lots of options. But again, it's just one of those things where, Yes, rope climb is a bit more functional. There's a lot of technique involved, but is it worth the potential risk? For I think that? it's minimal. I, I think I think number one, you should teach the skill, and I think you should have a lot of sub options for that. So, number one, if you're gonna have a rope, falls in the same category as like bikes and other things. Like if you don't have enough ropes, it it really creates a mess from a programming standpoint. We've been as high as nine. We're currently at six. We're going to go back to nine with three to four low ropes that are mounted in the pull-up rib rig for substitutions. That I think has tremendous value because it is a skill. It, it does allow you to teach a lot of different things and it's fun. You know, um, I don't find box jumps fun, you know, I, I, and it's, I think it's a, it's a confidence booster for a lot of people, which, which box jumps can be as well. Um, but for a lot of people, I think it's cool to see people understand the mechanics and the technique with regard to climbing rope. And then they can do things like go run um, an obstacle course. And now they can climb the rope and something like that. And should, when they get out of the gym, where that may have been their hangout before, but now it's not anymore, you know? So it, it's definitely more functional in that standpoint where you will find that type of movement and that type of requirement outside of the gym. It's not, it's not weird. Yeah. Again, it's, 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 you know, for both box jumps and rope climbs, there's obviously function involved. There's obviously increased work capacity, et cetera, Mm -hmm. but it's just, okay. You know, can I jump in place? Can I do pull-ups and tuck my knees and, and 
reduce the risk. Do you have any movements in line with these that we've been discussing that you found over the years, hey, maybe not worth it? The um, stones, like actual stones. Oh, yeah, that's a great one. People, there, and I have no things. beef with stones, by the way. Like, it's not about there, that, has tremendous utility and value. I, I would argue that there are few things that are that. So, there's a difference between lifting a very, you know, evenly loaded barbell and lifting odd objects. That's a whole nother subset of strength, which I think is incredibly valuable and arguably more functional. Um, However, I've seen people drop them on their toes. I've seen people break things. I've seen people like really jack up their hands and their forearms on that. So we have the rogue sandbags now. The other thing about stones, they just trash your forearms and your shoulders. Right. And I mean, yeah, if we're I mean, really, I've seen people come up with their neck and their face just like just. And some people think it's up. cool, like when it's like when people rip their hands for the first time. Look, no, I rip my hands. Cool. Like, cool, you're hurt. Like, you not wouldn't cool. be doing the same thing if you. you <laughs> that's know, an injury. That's yeah, an injury. if you if you broke your toe, you wouldn't be doing the same thing. And then, I mean, that's a great example too. If we can look at, well, hey, is it worth it for the box? We destroyed some floors with stones. Oh yeah, I mean, and and they they crack. So then you have like concrete and like all sorts of stuff all over the floor all the time, we, which you could have the same argument for the ropes. I mean, like if you have to, you have to replace those very regularly or when you have rope climb day, it looks like you now live in a barn. Yeah. You have to, you know, whoever's coaching your six or seven o'clock class is vacuuming. Right. So but, now I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for like the best, cause I don't love the poly blend ropes. That, we did shift to like the white ones. That's what you're referring to. Yeah. I don't love them. I don't think they grip as well. The, the hemp ropes those grip the best. They grip the best, but those are the, those shed and those trash they shed. You know, and, and, the, and they have a way shorter lifespan. Yeah, the other ropes that you were referring to, they still tear you up. And if you get the white ones, if someone bleeds, it's on there forever. Forever, yeah. So speaking of that, speaking of bleeding, do you let people tape your your uh, rig for pull ups? No. What, what do you allow and not allow at the box? So let's, let's run it. You got chalk, obviously. Mm -hmm. You have people that tape for a little while. I don't know if it's still relevant. There was this wad wax, which I actually quite liked. Do you allow any of that stuff on your rig? No, I mean, people put liquid chalk on their hands, but I, yeah, no, I don't, liquid anybody, chalk, but that's I don't let anybody, chalk. I don't let people put stuff on the equipment. I'm like, if you want to put it on your hands, that's fine. But we wipe all that stuff down anyway. And particularly now with the, you know, the hypersensitivity with regard to cleanliness and personal hygiene tape on the rig is a germ factory. Well, that's why I brought it up because, you know, when, when I moved to, when I had my boxes, I always would have a spiel bar and I would always have it at a height that worked for me. Right. Well, there, there's, there's, there's kind of probably secondary and, and tertiary repercussions of the tape too. So we're, we're, we're putting tape on the bar to do what? Just to make it grippier. To stay on the bar longer. And my okay, argument yeah. is right. So, and my argument is if your grip is the issue, you don't need tape because now you're going to be moving past your capacity. So I'll give you, I'll give you a personal example. So years ago we were doing the Tosh, um, the annual madness. And mm -hmm. I think Dustin Virgil and I were like two reps off on the second or third month of that. Cause it was Nicole. And I think we were the top two scores, like 191, 192 or something. Where like you were that. doing every, so for those that need reference right. every year, Tosh kind of creates a new challenge that extends for the entire year. And if you know, Tosh is um, Nicole Carroll, the director of trainings, I believe fiance. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think so. And a couple of years ago, it was all based Brian, on the Brian Shantosh. He's been on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was based on um, the benchmarks that year. Right. And one of them was Nicole, which is five rounds, 400 meter run, max pull ups. So, you know, being it's Tosh's annual madness and trying to win, I just go full ham sandwich. And That's the last it. time you went hard before Fran? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do it about every three years. The uh, I went full ham sandwich and gave myself an egregious bout of rhabdo. rhabdo. 
Yeah, I that's mean, that's one of the workouts in retrospect where you're like Glassman programmed to get people rabbed up. Well, was, well, I, here's the deal. I I don't think he did, right? I think it was, it was before. Programmed, be, it was before gymnastics grip were like a thing, and, and and it was before butterfly pull ups. Like nobody's gonna do that without butterfly pull ups. Like it's not happening. Well, and it was so just you. It just so shows you combine the ahead. increasing capacity. Yeah, it shows the increase in capacity. Yeah. you could not have possibly predicted that. Right. So anyway, the point is, I'm not doing 192 pull ups absent of grips on my hands i'm coming down so that alone so you by doing some of those things you're almost in you're almost introducing a much higher risk for a different type of injury so just kind of be aware of that what's the value because i mean that was i mean i couldn't do a pull-up for two months i could not i mean it was really bad dude like i I mean, I couldn't extend my elbow past 90 degrees for almost three weeks. I had no ability to put my hands over my head. I mean, I had rhabdo down my lats and my arms, everything. And it was, it was horrific. Like a, a pain on like an eight and a half on a scale of 10. Yeah. And no, and that makes sense. I was looking at it more from the blood, the germs, et cetera. But right, it, it, all of that there, but what I'm, I'm, there's another layer to that, right? Which sure, is like yeah. they're putting that on there because their grip is weak, and I'm like, why don't you do some more grip strengthening stuff? Like have them get on the pull up bar and, and grip hang. the bar and hang, or do farmers carries or do stuff like that. When you know people are chalking the shit out of the bar, and I'm like, grip harder. The chalk is not helping your weak ass grip. Well, and that's like I was saying, since moving to this area and going to Ralston Creek. Over the years, I've always found this spiel bar. I find this spiel bar to be a little grippier, you know, a little stickier, if you will. And right. Fric friction is a thing. That's not what I'm saying. Right. There's, there's friction, and then there's kind of faking friction, if you will. And, you know, here, the, the powder-coated rogue racks or rigs are very slick. But what I would tell anybody listening is those are what the games athletes use. There's, if you look at the games... There's never a spiel bar. It's always the standard rogue rig that's powder coated and always. they're fine. And over the last six months or so, since I've been training here, I've gotten better at it. So, you know, it was one of those things where at first I was like, oh man, like there's the only spiel bars are really high. So I either have to get on a box to go use them. And by high, he's referring to about six and a half feet off the floor. <laughs> that's probably accurate, but you know, so I just got used to it and, and now I've gotten better because of it. And I think a couple of things I had to do, I had to tweak my grip. I'm a thumb over the bar kind of guy, mm -hmm. full grip on the bar, learning to change that grip. So it's important to try those things. But again, whether it's max height or rope climbs or taping the bar, I think just as a coach, as a box owner, even as a member at a gym, evaluate, okay. Like, hey, and this goes across all things. Like, is this worth you know, no different than what Fern was talking about last episode with Fran, like how often should I challenge myself and push myself to this level? What risk do I want versus what reward am I going to get? And if you're using these things, are you using them as a crutch? Yeah. Or are they actually providing value? For instance, you know, it, like I should probably use grips less because I use grips like a lot of people once you learn what they're actually for, which is not actually to tear your hand, not actually to protect your hands. I use them to make the anchor point, not my hand, my wrist, because it's attached to my wrist, right? The way I use my grips. So am I helping my grip any? Probably not. I'd probably be well served to do a little bit more, you know, gripless pull up. Work. I've never used those gymnastic grips. I've never found them helpful. Maybe like you're saying, I'm using them more so because you think, okay, I'm not going to rip because ripping is never my problem. I think once you get experience with CrossFit, you shouldn't rip. I mean, once a year, maybe you get a small tear, but you either learn when you're going to rip. So you come off the bar or for right. me, what more often happens is I can tell when something's going and I can I'm experienced enough to actually change my hand position. Change the grip. We we uh, we had Jason program today, which is a hero workout with muscle ups, muscle -ups and ups squats, right? And air squats, yeah. And uh, Cassidy was in the middle of it, and like he finished, and I was like, "Damn, I was fast." Dude. I think I think it was like thirty. He's like, I, "Yeah." He's like, "I just started to rip on the last set, so I was done. I quit." And I'm like, "That's exactly what should happen." Yeah, that'd be like, "Oh my god, if I do another squat, I'm gonna break my knee." 
we would stop. He'd be like, okay, let's stop. Like, I'll be fine. No, no, tomorrow. one more. Yeah, one if more. I just stop, I'll, we'll be absolutely fine tomorrow. Right. Versus, you know, it's just, it's not it's worth, not it. worth it. Yeah. It's not it, worth it. And, you know, when you can start to feel that skin on skin friction, you're like, it's a matter of time before this goes, okay. which is, which is the whole purpose of the show, which is like, when you're, when we're talking about these things, the point of that is it's not worth it. That's it's it. not worth it. It's That's what, it. you know, if we would have said, Hey guys, max height box jumps are great, but for some people it's not worth it. So be smart about who does right. these. No one would comment. So, <laughs> yeah. With the statement was they have no value. But the statement was, it's not worth it. They have tremendous value. They're, it's just not worth it for, again, risk versus reward. Well, there we have it. All right, Fern. Again, if you're listening to the show, check us out on Patreon. For $6, you can support the show. You get a monthly Ask Us Anything and, and a lot more coming in 2021. And go ahead and check out our friends over at Doc Spartan. Use the code Best Hour. For 15% off your order. Check out the sex panther, beard butter, check out the coffee scrub, and check out the ball powder that Fern likes. So you never miss an episode of the podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and on all major podcasting platforms at Best Hour of Their Day. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of the best hour of our day. See you next time.